Good morning, SCA. It is great to be here once again. Monday morning, spring is in the air. I hope you had a great weekend, and it's great to see some nice weather coming up uh, here in the next uh, few few weeks coming. As some of you might have heard, we did have to let, temporarily lay off some of our classified staff. Uh, those people are Leanne Cross, Tracy Fox, Lynette McKellarin, Sue Murda, Meg Cross, and Allison Kajabi. Uh, their last day with us will be April 30th. Uh, we're certainly very sad to see them go. These ladies are an integral part of our team, and I'm so glad that this is temporary. We were able to retain Cindy Christensen, Cheryl Hebert, and Debbie Higgs. And just so you know, these decisions were based entirely on seniority as directed by Elk Island Public Schools. Three more quick updates here for you this morning. Uh, firstly, now that we're a few weeks into our online new learning environment, uh, teachers are gonna start giving out some different assessments. So stay tuned to your Google Classroom as to what those assessments are going to look like. Second of all, we are gonna have a school council meeting in this uh, current reality that we're in. We're gonna do it via Google Meet. It will be on April 22nd, that's this Wednesday. And so if you would like to attend, please email Lorraine McTurk and you will receive an invite link via email to that meeting. This is a meeting that is open to all parents, so I invite you to attend and stay tuned for some more updates on what the agenda for that day is gonna look like. Again, April 22nd, we look forward to seeing you there. And last of all, thirdly, maybe most importantly, uh, we are also gonna be doing parent-teacher interviews here in a couple of weeks. So May 4, 6, and 7, from 3 till 5 p.m., we're gonna do parent-teacher interviews. These are gonna happen via phone. And again, we're gonna be sending you out some more information on those in the coming days, just as far as how to book and what those are gonna look like. So again, parent-teacher interviews, May 4, 6, and 7, from 3 till 5 p.m. And lastly, I've asked Mr. Maxwell, once again, just to remind us about our distinctive as a Christian school and just the centrality of Christ that we all have within us in everything that we do. And so let's conclude with that focus. Over to you, Mr. Maxwell. Thanks, Mr. Elzinga. Happy Monday, SCA family. It's week three. Uh, let's keep going. Hey, first, I just want to say thanks to the encouragers out there uh, keeping us going doing these videos. Our first video had 769 views. Our second had 198, and they're about each eight and a half or so minutes long. So what does that tell us? They probably need to be shorter. I get it. Um, and we will probably get to that uh, as we go along here and get used to this new era we're in. Uh, nevertheless, I know it's another thing to do and watch, but uh, Mr. Elzinga thinks it's important. I do too. Um, our intention for these is threefold. Number one, to keep you up to date on the latest when it comes to all things school. Number two, to provide some Jesus-centered encouragement. And uh, this uh, this thing we're in is going to be tougher if we don't keep our eyes up. And number three, to maybe develop a little more closeness with our entire SCA family. There's going to be increasing need out there, and you might be able to help with that. Um, and that's in big part why we've started our own SCA COVID-19 section on our website. Maybe check that out. So thanks. Thanks for keeping up with these videos. They're airing every Monday at 9 a.m. And uh, don't forget when you're on the channel to subscribe. We've got uh, 45 subscribers so far, so that's cool. Hey, a little shorter, a little lighter, just a quick thought for you. Uh, Mike Whitmer, uh, he tells a story in Our Daily Bread about the day that he followed his friend Lee at dusk along the tops of terraced walls cut into the mountains of central China. He says this, I had never before, um, I had never been this way before, and I couldn't see more than one step ahead or how steep the ground dropped off to our left. I gulped and stuck close to Lee. I didn't know where we were going or how long it would take, but I trusted my friend. That's the same position as Thomas, the disciple who always seemed to need reassurance. Jesus told his disciples that he must leave to prepare a place for them and that they knew that the way to the place, that they knew the way to the place where he was going. Thomas asked a logical follow-up question, Lord, uh, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? This is John chapter 14. Jesus, he didn't quench Thomas's doubt by explaining where he was taking them. He simply assured his disciple that he was the way there, and that was enough. We too have questions about our future, obviously. None of us know the details of what lies ahead, how long this is going to be. Life is full of twists we don't see coming. That's okay. It's enough to know that Jesus, who is the way and the truth and the life, verse 6, he knows what's next. He only asks that we walk close to him. So God bless you with that. 
I hope that encourages you. To close, let me tell you about a fun contest that's starting today. There's a prize, so listen up. At exactly 12 noon on Instagram and on our website, the COVID-19 fun page, uh, our staff baby contest begins. Posted there is going to be a picture of one of our staff members when they used to be really cute. The first person to email me the correct answer wins a meal at the Eagle's Nest. Again, that's posted today at 12 noon exactly on Instagram and on our website. And our website. So good luck, everybody. Have a good week. Stay safe.